Okay. Uh, here we're going to finish up on uh, chapter 1.3, and we're going to look at some other examples of uh, evaluating limits algebraically. All right, so sometimes we're going to see some uh, specific cases where we have conjugate expressions. So if there is a sum or difference of two terms in the numerator, um, then we can multiply the numerator and denominator by that conjugate. So for instance, example 1, limit of 6 minus uh, root x plus 32 over x minus 4. Now when we first, when we first, uh, first thing that we always do is we plug in that uh, target um, x value, that argument. So if we plug 4 in for x, we're going to get uh, 4 plus 32, which is root 36. 6 minus 6 is 0. 4, plug 4 in for x, we get 4 minus 4, which is 0. Now 0 over 0 indicates that we can uh, do something further uh, to simplify the expression. And what we can do is in this uh, instance, we can identify the conjugate for the numerator that has the square root. And the conjugate of 6 minus root x plus 32 is simply going to be 6 plus square root of x plus 32. So once we identify the conjugate, we're going to multiply by the same term, numerator and denominator. And then we're going to simply distribute through and uh, expand. So if we distribute through, we're going to get 36 minus, this is a difference of um, uh, difference of squares, so this will simply give us x plus 32. In the denominator, it'll be x minus 4 times parentheses 6 plus x, 6 plus root um, x plus 32. And if we simplify the numerator, we're going to get 36 minus x minus 32, which gives us 4 minus x. Now 4 minus x can cancel out with x minus 4. Uh, the only thing that we have to um, um, keep in mind is the fact that we have to factor out a negative 1, which will then allow the, um, the two factors uh, to be canceled out. So once we cancel out the x minus 4 in the denominator, then we can try replugging in uh, the argument and see if we get a real number now. So if we plug 4 in x, we're going to get 6 plus root 36. Numerator, there are no variables to plug in. Those just, it's just negative 1. So we get negative 1 over 6 plus 6 which reduced to be negative 1 over 12. Okay. Uh, another type of problem is having to simplify by finding common denominator. So example 2, limit of our expression, our complex expression, as x approaches 0. So first thing we do, we plug in our target x value. So we're going to get 1 fourth minus 1 fourth, which is 0 all over 0. So 0 over 0 indicates we can do something further with the expression. So looking at this, um, uh, looking at these, this expression above the x, we're going to find a common denominator of x and x plus 4 times 4. And once we do that, we can balance the numerators, making this 4 minus parentheses x plus 4 uh, over 4 x plus 4 all over x. 4 minus x minus 4 reduces to be negative x. And now we can move this x up to share the same denominator space as the 4 times x plus 4. And once we do that, then we see that the x's uh, cancels out nicely for us. And now we can try replugging in our argument. So 0 goes in for x. We get 4 times 0 plus 4, or 4 times 4, which is 16. And numerator, there are no variables, it's just that negative 1. So our limit is simply negative 1 over 16. Okay, one more topic uh, from this section is the squeeze theorem. So squeeze theorem says that if we, if we have three functions where um, uh, we have a middle function that is uh, always between the lower function h of x and the greater function g of x, then for all x in the interval containing c, and if the outer two limits, the limit of h of x as x approaches c, and the limit of g of x as x approaches c, if the limit of the upper and lower function approaches the same y value, then we can say that the middle function is also going to approach 
the same y value. So graphically, we can see this. So let's say we have a, uh, a lower function, h of x, that's always lower than or equal to uh, the middle function. And then we also have uh, the upper function, g of x, which is always higher than or uh, uh, equal to the, uh, the middle function, f of x. So <coughs> if the upper function approaches uh, uh, the same limit as the bottom function, then because this, ex because this relationship holds true, we can also say that the middle function also approaches the same y value, or the middle function also has the same limit as x approaches c. So let's look at example three. Okay, let h of x equals one, let g of x equals x squared plus one, and h of x is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to g of x. So we've already established that um, the lower function is h of x, the upper function is g of x, and the middle function is f of x. Find the limit of f of x as x approaches zero. So if we want to find the limit as x approaches zero, what we can do is we can find the limit of the outer two functions and see if they agree. If they agree, then we know that we can also um, make that claim for the middle function. So the lower function limit as x approaches uh, limit as x approaches zero for h of x is simply going to be equal to one because that um, constant is not going to be changed at all. And the limit of x squared plus one, or limit of g of x as x approaches zero, so we simply plug zero in for x, we get zero plus one, which is one. So the lower function has a limit of one, <clears throat> the upper function has a limit of one, so therefore by squeeze theorem, we can say that the middle function must also have a limit of 1.